light jog. It's kind of a rainy kind of day and look what I see over there. There's two deer. I don't know if you can see them. Let me let me show there's two deer there just eating grass. I've never seen deer in Evanston before. This is crazy guys. Oh we saw in Wisconsin the, yeah. the, the state park, right? Hey guys, so our advisor said that we can go back to work next week. So what does that mean? Basically, he's going to declare us as essential personnel and we're going to take shifts. So like two or three people per shift, something like that throughout the day. Um, yeah. So, we're on our way right now to H Mart to get some groceries. It's Friday afternoon now, and as you can see, I'm all geared up for shopping. Honestly, I think I look cuter like this than without, so I should usually go out like this. Um, here's the driver. Tonight, guys, I'm going to film some recipes that I've been trying. Well, I tried to make bread twice and I kind of filmed it, but today I'm going to try to film like a full successful like run through of it. <laughs> hey guys, I'm in the kitchen right now and today I'm going to attempt to make bread correctly. So, so far this week I've tried two times and if you guys don't know, these are my first two times attempting to make bread. The first time um, last Saturday was pretty miserable. Then I tried again and it was pretty successful. I tried with an easier recipe that calls for less liquids, more solids, and that way it was less sticky and a lot easier to work with. So today I'm gonna try it again and try to make it well. And you guys can see the result. So I'm getting the recipe from this website here. It's like King Author whatever. And basically, you can't really see it, so I'll read it to you. We have to first make the Tom Jones starter. And in order to make the Tom Jones starter, we add three tablespoons of water, three tablespoons of whole milk, and two tablespoons of unbleached flour. So I'll go do that. And you heat that in a saucepan um, until it reaches a kind of sticky consistency. So we're going to um, stir, 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 and mix all the three things together. And we're going to stir, stir, stir until combined and the consistency becomes more um, thicker like a paste and by the way this is on low heat guys that's very important or else the milk will curdle So I added all the ingredients in here besides the condom starter. So basically there's two and a half cups of flour, there's a quarter cup of sugar, and there's a quarter cup of melted butter in here. And just gonna give this a quick stir. And then to this, I'm gonna add the yeast, which I've been letting sit for around five minutes. And then to that, I'm going to add my Tom 
Long John starter that has milk and egg mixed into it. So. And guys, you want to kind of cool down your Tong Tong starter before um, pouring it in to the mixture. But one easy way to do that is to add the milk to the starter. Now give it a good whisk here to mix all the ingredients together. Ooh. What is the successful rate of this recipe? 100%. Guys, you want to get a pool that looks like this to attach to your um, It's what they, in countryside mixer. they use it to drag uh, the cow. And then try to get this slush out of the whisk. That was really hard. time because I think this I think um, at, uh, fresh yeast takes longer to knead than instant yeast but here it is and then what I'm gonna do is into my original pan it's best to clean it off if you can but I don't have any tissues you put a tiny bit of oil and then you want to spread it around in there and this is so that when you put your um when you put your piece of dough in there it won't stick to the bottom while it rises so I'm gonna just spread the oil around again it's best to clean out this thing first but I don't have tissues okay and then we're gonna take this piece of dough and try to put it in there if possible guys as you can see the ball of yeast is in here and this oil pan is oiled so that when I take it out it'll be easy and then I take some um, saran wrap and wrap it Now, you're gonna have to let it sit for around an hour until it rises to around twice its size. Hey guys, so the bread has been rising for around an hour, an hour 15 minutes or so. This is now what it looks like, much bigger than before. And then we're gonna do the next step. So we're gonna put some flour onto the cutting board. And then, We're gonna get some flour. So the thing you have to do is put flour on your hands and on the top of the dough, like so, and then spread it around the top of the dough and pour it out. It should come out relatively easily since we oiled the bottom, but yeah, there we go. And now what we have to do is like um, knead out the bubbles. Well, actually, there are quite a few bubbles in here, which is nice. So let's see. If at any point it feels sticky, it just means that it's a little bit too hydrated, and you should add more water. I mean, add more flour to it. Now, at this point, the bread dough should be really, really soft and nice. And basically, like when you lift it, you can like. Okay, I'm not going to show you guys how to spread it because. I don't want to destroy it, but you can see on YouTube how people like spread the dough around. Okay, so now I'm just gonna get a little bit more flour so it doesn't stick too much. And I'm gonna cut it with the knife into forks. And while you're at the step, you do want to get like the baking tray that you're gonna bake it in. You actually like if you have one, you want to use a bread bin, obviously, but if you don't have one like me and I can't really get one right now, um, then just use like whatever tray you have. But you want it to be a little tall, mine's not tall, but you want to be a little tall because your bread will rise. And yeah, if it's not tall, it'll have like a huge muffin top. Okay, get a little bit more dough now. And you want to make it such like roll it kind of into a ball such that there's a smooth surface. Okay. 
to get a nice smooth surface, we're going to take a rolling pin and roll it out. I have to tell you that I don't have a rolling pin, so I'm using this like saran wrap as my rolling pin. That's too bad. But yeah. So I'm going to put my other two pieces up for a second. No. You want to like roll, 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 roll. Oh, it's sticking. Roll, 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 roll. So now we pounded out all the bubbles and we're gonna roll it in. We're gonna roll it in. Uh oh, it's stuck. Okay, we're gonna roll it in like so. Remember to use flour if at any point you feel like it's getting too sticky though. Okay. Definitely feels too sticky right now. Okay. And then you gather the leftover flour and put it back on. And then at this step, you want to roll it the other way. I actually don't think it's a bad thing that it's sticky though. It just means there's more water content, which that means at the end it'll be fluffier. Okay. And then we want to roll it in this way. It's just like, it's just harder to work with, but the bread will still be delicious. Okay, now that I have this roll here, I'm gonna put it in my tray. You wanna lightly butter your tray or put some oil on it. Um, I'll just put some flour on. I don't have butter or oil handy right now. Okay, and for the rest of flour, then I'm gonna place this in here. Now usually the, the width of the tray is pretty much the size of the roll, but in my case, that's not the case since this is square and not rectangular. So I'm gonna um, flatten it out a bit, I guess. Yes, that's what I'll do. <laughs> okay, now let's work with the next chunk. Definitely make sure to get flour on it, especially if it's more sticky like mine is. Okay, you want to knead it a bit to get out the air bubbles. And then you want to shape it into a ball such that the top surface is smooth. Now take the rolling pin and roll, 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 just as before. Not easy, guys. Clearly a quite difficult task, and clearly I'm making up mess, as you guys can see. Okay, anyway, that's enough of size for me. I'm going to start rolling in now. I think it is a little bit sticky though, so, oops. Anyway, give it this is okay. okay. So there we have another roll. And I'm going to stretch it a bit and put it in this tray. Um, also the first one, I'm going to stretch it a bit more. Okay, we passed it. We have two more. Get this big thing here. Cover it in flour. Wow, it's actually really soft this time. That's a good sign, I think. Although it really didn't have to be this sticky, I have to say. And then take this one, 
roll it into a nice bowl. I find myself constantly having to add more flour because it's so sticky. Oh well, shake it into a nice bowl. And then use this rolling pin and roll, roll, roll. I don't think you have to get it that thin. Just as thin as you can. Again, this will be much easier with a rolling pin, but I don't exactly have that. So. even though it's not a really nice shape here. I can tell already that this bread is gonna be really risen and large. Okay, now roll this one out. And roll it again. See, it's a huge now, really fat piece. So you do want to like tighten this crease here. I haven't done it for the other ones, but I do see this in all the videos I watch. And then put some flour on the crease and then I'm gonna strip it out like I've been doing the other ones. Don't know if this is bad for the bread. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, three is like the perfect amount for this. Um, tray here, so I'm not sure I'm going to use the fourth one in here, and I flattened them out a bit too. So Now we cover it again with saran wrap and wait for another 30 minutes or so. Hey guys, so I managed to unpan this thing after it cooled down for a bit and you can see very nice low stuck to the bottom a little bit because I didn't oil the bottom of the pan at all but if you have time please do that and you can see like the bottom and the sides as well as the top are this beautiful brown color. Top is a beautiful color because of egg wash. 
but if you don't want bumps in the top, do egg wash very slowly, very thin layer with a brush. I don't have a brush, so I couldn't do that. And wait till it dries before putting on the next layer. So let's break it open and see what this thing looks like. Wow, this is really, really quite beautiful. So as you can see, like we can, Uh, it's a little hot still. Having trouble tear it, but you can see like you can tear it into like thinner shreds, whatever you call that. And some shreds like this. Now you have it. Hokkaido milk bread recipe. Hey guys. So. Today is um, May 7th and it's a Thursday and so it's just in the afternoon and I just wanted to show you something. So today like Lillian is all dressed up like that because he has a postdoc interview and what that means is he's gonna call over Skype because it's quarantine obviously and well actually over Zoom and then he's gonna interview on there and he's gonna share his slides and give a short presentation and then the people interviewing him are going to ask him questions and they're gonna have a good chat and figure out whether or not he's a good fit for the group etc. So it's kind of important. Um, are you ready? He's not ready. Are you excited? No. <laughs> He's not excited. But anyways, give us some tips. Okay, he doesn't want to give me some tips, so I'll give you some tips. Even though I haven't done a postdoc interview yet, but like, basically, I would say don't be nervous, obviously, and then share what you've done during your PhD research, but don't share too many different things projects just like share a couple is enough the ones that you're the most familiar with and then be prepared to answer questions about it as well as tell them what you're interested in doing in their group so that's about all and just show that you're a good team player and you know very collaborative and a nice and friendly person with good personality that's about all um so yeah let's hope it goes well i'll update you guys after the interview Oh, first of all, though, let me just show you the, his setup over there. So basically, he put his laptop on this stand here so that when he stands up, it'll get his face precisely. So, see you guys. Hey, guys. Lillian finished his um, interview, and he said it went pretty well, right? No, look at my depressing face. 20% is uh, rejected. What did they ask you? They ask you, why do you dare to apply to our group? <laughs> Look at your resume. <laughs> it's not even below average. It's below the bottom. When will they get back to you? I think that tomorrow they will give me the rejection. <laughs> He's joking. He did really well. So fingers crossed that he'll get the offer. So we'll go to Berkeley. But anyways. And the finger were broken. <laughs> But anyways, now we're like just here at Buffalo Wild Rings. This is our first time ordering takeout since the um, quarantine started, so I'm kind of excited. I don't know if it's safe to like eat out or something, but anyway, we're just sitting in the car waiting for our delivery. Coronavirus is coming. Here's Buffalo Wild Wings. So, guys, so I'm home with my Buffalo Wild Wings. Check that out. So basically, we have. 20 pieces of wings here. I asked for sauce on the sides, so here are the sauces. Um, ranch, um, I think there's like chipotle sauce and like medium sauce, I'm not sure. And then we have some carrots and celery sticks here. And then this is french fries. I guess there's no ketchup to go with the french fries, but that's okay. And they gave us some antiseptic wipes. So, just gonna enjoy this dinner and then yeah 